Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanna to talk about using a MacBook Pro, which I obviously have right in front of me here. And the reason I wanted to make this video is because I recently downloaded the software update to Big Sur, and I had a lot of concerns when first navigating it that I figured other people might be having the same ones as well. So that's why I wanted to make this video to talk about some navigation tips, some customization tips for your MacBook Pro. I'm actually splitting this video into two parts, so make sure you check the description box for the topics that I'll be covering in this video and what I'll be covering in part two, which I'll be posting in a couple of days. But I will have everything in this video listed with the timestamps as well. If you wanna skip to anything specific, you can do that by going into the description box and clicking on the timestamps. And as always, I will be showing screen recordings so that you can actually follow along with me as I'm going through all of the examples and showing you how to do everything. So let's just go ahead and get started. So the first thing I wanna go over is actually using this trackpad and how to customize it to your liking. So the way you can do that is by going into your system preferences and going into trackpad. So here are all the options that you can use with your trackpad. And it's nice that they show you an example of all of the things over on the right hand side here so that you actually can see what they mean. One thing that I know a lot of people do like to change is the scroll direction. So this is kind of the default that comes with MacBooks is the scroll direction as natural. So really if you scroll down on your trackpad, it's gonna scroll up on the screen and vice versa. But if you wanna scroll down on the screen while you're dragging your fingers down, then you just unclick scroll direction natural and it'll show you here an example when you scroll your fingers down and up, it actually takes the page down and up like what your finger motion is doing. You can also utilize all of these features like the zoom, smart zoom, rotate, and then there's even more gestures. So swiping between pages, showing your notification center, your mission control, your launch pad, and your desktop. So there are a ton of options that you can use to customize your trackpad. The next biggest thing on this computer that took me a while to get acclimated with is the control tab. And that's this little touch screen tab right here. So the way that you can customize this is by going into your system preferences and clicking on keyboard. And right here on the bottom, it says customize control strip. And this entire thing right here will pop up. And these are the options that you can use as defaults on your control strip. So I'll show you what I have on mine right now. So these are all the options I currently have. Brightness, I have mission control, launch pad, I have keyboard brightness, play pause, volume, and Siri. And if I wanted to change those, all you have to do is click and drag down and it will pop up on your control strip. And you can minimize it as well so that you can only see three of them. And as you can see right now, they are wiggling, which means if you hold them down, you can rearrange them. So if you want do not disturb, to be all the way at the front here. You can move that. And then once you're done, you just click done. And that'll be your default for your control strip. So as you can see right now, I'm screen recording my screen, so that's why that's there. But if I just click this little arrow, all of those other options will pop up, including Do Not Disturb, which is the one I just added to my control strip. And something to note about the control strip is it'll change based on what you're doing on your computer at any given time. So for example, when I open up my Final Cut Pro to edit my videos, 
new controls will pop up. Those default ones won't be there if I'm in a specific application. So that's just something to keep in mind that it will change based on what you're doing. But if you go back to your desktop, the defaults will always be here on your control strip. The next thing I wanna talk about is customizing your dock, which is that bar at the bottom with all of your little applications. So there are a bunch of things you can do to customize this. You can make it bigger or smaller. You can also go to system preferences and go to dock and menu. You can put it on the left-hand side, on the right-hand side. Bottom is obviously the default. You can also do, I have magnification turned off. So for example, when I hover over, it just tells me the name of the app, but if I click magnification, they get bigger if I hover over them. So you can do that as well. You can also add or remove applications from your dock really easily. So I'm gonna show you how to remove one. So for example, I'm gonna remove this Apple Music one since I don't use Apple Music. So if I just click and drag it, you can see it says remove, and now it's gone. And so for example, if I wanted something else to go in that place, I would open up my applications and then scroll down. So maybe I want Apple Music back. Maybe all of a sudden I start using it a lot. If I click and drag it from my applications, it will put itself right on the dock. So similarly to customizing your dock on the bottom, you can also customize your menu on the top here, which is really helpful. I wasn't a huge fan of the defaults that this one came with, so I'm gonna show you how to change those as well. So again, if you go to dock and menu bar, these are all of the options that you can put on your menu bar. So for example, Bluetooth, if I don't want that there, I can uncheck it and it'll go away. Same thing with AirDrop. I can uncheck it, it'll go away. This is my screen recording happening right now, so obviously that's gonna stay there until my screen recording is done. Battery as well, this was something that wasn't showing up in my menu bar at all, and that was frustrating for me because I was like, I don't know if my computer is dying or not. So if you go to battery, show in menu bar, you can also show percentage or not. And then this is also how you adjust what you wanna see on your clock, so date and time, day of the week, analog, 24 hour, time with seconds, all of that is in this dock and menu bar section. And the same way that you can pull things off of your dock and remove them, you can also do that up here by clicking command, holding it down, and then it'll get rid of it. Another helpful thing you might need to know how to do is increasing the size of the words on your desktop. So. For example, the default words are pretty small and could be hard to read for some people. So if you go into your system preferences and click on displays and click on, so right now default for display is checked, but if you check scaled, here you can see larger text. Yes, we're gonna switch and I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So this is what larger text looks like and they'll give you a preview as well. So there's larger, there's midsize, there's default, and then there's smaller if you want your words to be really small. So we're gonna go back to the default. All right, so we're back at the default, which is the one I'm comfortable with. But that's how you make everything bigger if that's something that you need. If you have difficulty seeing your screen, that can be a really helpful option. The next thing I wanna show you how to do is clean up your desktop. So this is pretty clean for me right now, but obviously some of my folders are over here. I'll actually even make it more disorganized just so I can show you what it's like. So sometimes this will happen where everything will kinda of get out of whack and instead of having to drag everything back over to the right hand side, the way you can organize your desktop is by making sure you're on your desktop and at the top here, you click view. If you click clean up by and hover over it, here are all the options. I'm gonna clean up by name, that way everything goes into alphabetical order. And there it is. So all of my documents went over here and they're all in alphabetical order, which is super helpful and it saves so much time. You can also clean up by any of these other options as well. 
So I think that's just a great way to clean up your desktop if it's looking a little bit messy. So that's it for today. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I will leave a couple more videos linked in the description box to some other videos I've created about helping with technology, navigating it, like using an iPhone without a home button, using the new iOS 14 update, how to use Zoom, things like that. So I will link a couple more videos in the description box if you wanna check any of those out. Don't forget to check out part two, which I will have linked up here and in the description box once it's posted. But I hope to see you guys in my next video. Bye.